Let's say, for the sake of argument, you wanted to know some easy ways to 3D print all of these mice parts, and hypothetically, you had a pre-disassembled Viper Ultimate PCB you wanted to use for them. How would you do it? Well, let's first start with a disclaimer and a proper checklist that doesn't involve one of my least favorite people's voices. This process we're going to go over today involves rehousing a PCB and dealing with Windows 10 registry files. If this is something that you are not comfortable with, do not continue. If you break your mouse, it is not my fault. It is yours. I will take no responsibility, shed no tears, take no accountability, lose one ounce of sleep, or waste any time. If you mess something up, do you understand? This video will have four sections. What you need, your first print, building the mouse, and Windows 10 setup. You might have to print things multiple times or look for different resources for different OS's. If I switch to Windows 11 though, I'll make some sort of update to this video for what I know. This won't have a disassembly guide for the Viper Ultimate because I'm too scared to remove the battery from the super glue hold it's in for fear of damaging the sensor. Call me baby, do your worst, I don't care. But I have linked one in the description if you need along with a tuning guide for a 3D printer that I personally followed. Section 1. Prep. For this project, I'd recommend you personally own your 3D printer, or it's owned by somebody who allows you to readily print from it for little to no cost. Unfortunately, my measurements are not going to be perfect. I did the best that I could, but I was adjusting on the fly with initially a less than tuned 3D printer. And until more people try out this project and give me shit for my bad measurements, I cannot recommend this to people who are going to be buying these prints from a farm. About the cheapest printer you can get that can reasonably print well is the $200 Ender 3 V3 SE. And that's not including filament, time sink, tuning headache, and any other justification to use it that's not only for this one dinky mouse project. I think the hobby is a lot of fun, but I don't think it's really for everyone. Especially not in its current state. It's getting cheaper and more accessible every year, but I would say it's still a long ways away. Section 2. Your first print. I would start with just printing everything as is, as as is might change over time. Make sure you check for any pinned comment or the description for any wildly notable changes to look out for, depending on when you watch this. For these overhangs on the body, one of the most important things to have right though is your bridging speed, as I prefer to not use supports for a solid fitting. The only supports I would use are for the clicks with these settings. The only thing I adjusted here was pattern separation, XY separation, and checking off to only build supports off the plate to force Prusa's slicer to use as little supports as possible. I also opted to not use their newer organic supports and instead just use the grid rectilinear as this will force it to only generate supports for what is floating above the build plate. Only this section here. The only other thing that should be floating is the bridges the clicks will be fit snugly into but I would suggest no supports and just have solid bridge tuning. The material I used was PLA, but if you know how to print something out of something like ASA, I'd say go for it. According to this random chart I found online, it's much lighter, and the fact that it's weaker to impact doesn't really mean anything unless you're a turbo child with your technology. Don't be a turbo child with your technology. Section 3. What to do with what you printed. Once you've taken your Viper apart, all you'll need from it is the main PCB, the battery, or this smaller battery, the scroll wheel, and finally, these four screws. These tiny sharp ones I like for the front legs where these slightly bigger blunt ones I use for the middle. To start it is very simple. Line up the PCB with these four screw holes and wow, what do you know when you're halfway there? Now comes the most important bit. Put your left and right click in and have a feel. Too much pre-travel? Make the height extrude 0.1 millimeter lower on that click and try again. Not clicking at all? Try pulling up on the click and if you hear it releasing the switch, raise the height extrude 0.1 millimeter. This front section here is wide open, making it quite easy to check what's going on there. Yours might end up like mine where I learned my PCB is warped somehow and I have to use two different heights for both of them. Out of all the one people that have tested this design so far, all signs point to this being normal. The next thing you'll probably be thinking about is where do I stick my battery? Well, here's a few things to consider. Can I still click both clicks? Can I still scroll? Can I still plug in the battery? Is there somewhere I can stick this to? How does this affect the weight distribution? One existential crisis later, and you'll just need something sticky. I like super glue for this, but 
I do live with the fear of ruining my sensor the moment I want to move where the battery is. One day I was experimenting with it on top of where the LED is and accidentally ripped it off. Now is the scroll wheel holder. Easiest way to put it on is to take the left click off, slide the scroll blocker on and put the left click back in. And after this, it's the skates. I went with sapphires of course, but you don't have to. I got engrossed into the speed trap with super glides and this is just another stepping stone into that. Anything that's a dot will likely do, but you'll be just fine with the PTFE Viper Ultimate skates. Those fit perfectly on these legs. You might want to remove these fillets though. Section four, Windows 10 setup. I'd recommend doing this with another mouse if possible. First, look up mouse in the start menu, search for it, and make right your primary click. Download Rockcell and do the whole install process. Once you've restarted, it's set rotation to 180. At this point, you'll want to switch to the backwards mouse. Everything feels right, you can stop here, but your scroll wheel will be backwards. Next step will be editing registry files, so be careful. And again, follow these steps at your own risk. First, we need some more info though. Search for device manager in the start menu, go to human interface devices, and find your Razer Viper Ultimates. Don't ask me why there's many of them. I know one is for plugged in, one is for wireless, but the third, maybe docked? I don't know. Anyway, double click on all three, go to details, select device instance path for property and keep this open while we go to the registry. In the start menu, type in REGE and open the registry editor. Paste in what I have in the description labeled registry paste and find the same VID folder you have as the Razer's device instance path. Hit this arrow, then this one, then click into device parameters. Double click flip flop wheel and change the value to one. Do this for the other two Razer Viper Ultimates and Device Manager if you have them and unplug your mouse and plug it back in. Everything went well, you, your mouse should be scrolling the right way. Closing thoughts. As you might notice, this mouse looks a little bit different than what we ended with in the lobotomize your mouse video due to me still tweaking it. I think I'm about as close as I could get to perfect and I'm quite tired of looking at this on shape sketch for it, but that opinion might change in a couple days. If you want to see the story behind me making this project, make sure to check out my last video. Subscribe for more strange projects like this, like my next video where I attempt to play some FPS games with this chat pad for movement and analog stick for aim.